6 verses 21 to 24. The title is like Paul and Tychicus. It's mentioned in in scriptures. Scripture or servants should serve the church like Paul and Tychicus. Uh, when you find yourself thinking throughout the day, be sure to pray. Otherwise, various distracting thoughts may take over. Uh, the adversary inserts wrong things into your thoughts. A life filled with mistakes is the result of continuously entertaining incorrect thoughts. Always include your include prayer in your thoughts. Moreover, since you breathe all day anyway, try connecting your breath with prayer. The 478 breathing technique is quite effective. Inhale slowly for four seconds and hold for seven seconds and exhale slowly for eight seconds. This can significantly aid your prayer, improve your health also. So, uh, What should you pray about throughout the day? Personally, as I inhale deeply, I confess, my Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a declaration of faith, acknowledging my Lord who is Christ. In Christ, all my sins, calamities, and the power of hell are already defeated. Right? Secondly, when I inhale and pause, I pray for be feared and empowered. The mind should be filled with the Spirit of God. I see God's spiritual, intellectual, physical, financial, and uh, manpower given from above. Thirdly, as I exhale, I pray, may the kingdom of God come, breaking all darkness. Exhaling, I pray, may the kingdom of God come upon to 37 countries, 5,000 at the needs this, 20,000 universities, and over all our great church, and wherever I go. It's wonderful when all darkness collapsed. Try doing this while breathing throughout the day. Inhale for four seconds, confessing, Lord, my Lord Jesus Christ. 
Then pause seven seconds. Praying, Lord, please fill me now with the Holy Spirit and empower me with the spiritual, intellectual, physical, financial, and human strength. It takes seven seconds. Exhale, releasing toxins and unbelief from your body. Praying, may the kingdom of God come upon 237 nations, 5,000 ethnic diseases, 20,000 universities, and break the power of darkness here. There's the prayer. As you continue to enjoy these blessings, you are waiting for something. While doing so, focus within this enjoyment. You might find yourself caught up in various activities, hindering you from God's work. So, organize, clear things up, and concentrate. Then, a clear answer comes. Choose that and focus on it. As you do, surely you will find companions. Engage in concentrated oneness. Now, challenges will arise. If you continuously enjoy this, you will undoubtedly become an eternal masterpiece. You, our church, and the work you do will become eternal masterpieces. May you enjoy this 24 hours a day. Surely, the 25 hours answer will come. Then you are set to establish an eternal masterpiece. Now, going into today's scripture, what is it that you must first understand. In today's scripture, there's something you should grasp. It might be a bit challenging to visualize, but try drawing it once it is written as diakonos in Greek. Diakonos. This is in Greek regarding this term mentioned earlier about Tychicus. It means worker, or more precisely, servant. Um, this is what we are called. Additionally, there is a term oikonomos, which means steward or manager. So, you are the one instructed with managing all the work of God's kingdom. In Matthew 23, 11, Jesus said, the greatest among you will be your servant. Yes, you are called to be a servant. Who lived the life of a servant well? In Mark 10, 35, 10, 45, Jesus said, For even the Son of Man did not come to the come to be served, but to serve. Yes, 
Jesus came here to serve. We should live as servants just like that. In 1 Peter 4, 10, it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Since each of you has received a gift from God, Use that gift to serve as faithful stewards. Two martyrs have come forth today, Paul and Tychicus. How did these two serve? First, how did Paul serve? In Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Paul refers to himself as a servant of Christ. Slave of Christ. Yeah. In Greek, doulos. Which means slave. How did everything for for Christ? He did everything for Christ. So he refers to himself as a slave of Christ. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7, Paul described himself as a minister of the gospel. Another term for a servant, a servant of the gospel. In Ephesians 6, 20, he is called an ambassador in chains, working for the one who sent him. In Ephesians 1, 16 and 3.14, Paul was a pastor who prayed for the saints continually. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20, he asked for prayer for himself even, even while in prison to boldly proclaim the gospel. Please continue to pray for me, just as Paul asked for prayer while being in prison. Second, now, who was Tychicus? In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 21 to 22, it is explained. First, he was described as a beloved brother in the Lord. Wherever we are, we should be people loved in the church. Tychicus was someone deeply loved by both pastors and saints. Second, he was also called a faithful servant in the law. Faithfulness means being someone trustworthy enough to be trusted with tasks. The term servant here corresponds to diaconos. In English, deacon or deaconess. Thirdly, therefore, Tychicus did well in facilitating good communication 
between pastors and saints. If there is no communication, it becomes frustrating, right? Even among our saints, when someone says, Pastor, a member is going through such a situation. Please pray. It's greatly appreciated. And then I become more attentive. We connect. We pray, right? I called someone who was about to move because they haven't been visible in the church. Wondering if they had already moved, no one else told me. So I called out of frustration. They shared their situation, saying they would return to the church by the uh, Luna, Luna New Year in February. Even though they didn't come today, I understood. And I said, I would pray for them. For pastors like me, who regularly attend church and communicate prayer topics well, it's okay. But for those who don't come to the church, don't communicate at all, it's quite frustrating and concerning. A lot of prayer goes into such situations. Fourth, so that Tychicus did well was informing each other about their situations. In the scripture, Paul says, Tychicus will tell you all about my activities, my situations, and you will learn about our circumstances, and Tychicus will comfort your hearts. Paul is in prison in Rome while spreading the gospel. And how are the efficient church members doing? They must be anxious and worried since their pastor is in prison. Tychicus goes and shares all these circumstances with the church members later. Later, uh, in the latter part of his ministry, uh, Paul sends Tychicus as the responsible worker for the Ephesians church. Tychicus was an excellent worker. Some pastors could trust completely. So Tychicus went and comforted the hearts of the saints who were anxious and worried. May our saints become faithful servants like Paul and Tychicus. All right. Let's move on to conclusion. What do saints need most before serving? When you serve the church, you may get tired using your own strength. So, in today's scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 23 to 24, there is a blessing prayer. Firstly, there is a need for peace that comes from God. This peace is called Eirene in Greek. This peace comes only from God. Although, although there was 
enmity between God and humanity, Jesus Christ reconciled us to God through the cross. This ARNA is given to us through Jesus Christ. Every time you look at the cross, you should be thankful that perfect peace has been achieved for you through Christ. There is no true peace without Christ. Look at the world today. Wars are breaking out in various places. Christ is needed there. Christ is needed in your soul and in your homes, in your country. This peace can only come through Christ. Secondly, according to the second blessings prayer, there is a need for love accompanied by faith that comes from God. Love with faith. The term for this love is agape. In Greek, this love is different from worldly love. It refers to the love that God gives. This agape love represents the love that sacrificed the only begotten son on the cross. Therefore, agape, this love, comes out completely through faith in Christ. In those who do not believe in Christ, agape does not manifest. Yeah. It is it is the love of the cross. The love of God. The true love. Today, you need the peace that comes from Christ and the love that is fully realized through faith in Christ. Lastly, according to the third blessing prayer, there is a need for grace that comes from God. In Greek, it is called charis. This charis means receiving forgiveness from God even even though you don't deserve it. It is a gift God gave us Christ as grace, even though we were not deserving. We have no qualification to receive this grace. So, our faith, salvation, and our life of faith are all given through charis, grace. Don't think lightly of it just because it is free. It's the, it is the tremendous grace of Jesus Christ through his cross. Therefore, before serving you need the peace that comes from God. Love with faith. That comes from God. And grace that comes from God. So, what is the purpose for which God has created us anew in Christ? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 explains it well. 
for we are gas uh, workmanship, handiwork. This term, workmanship, is crucial. Yeah, handiwork is crucial. It's the Greek word poiema, poiema, which refers to a work completed by a part. You and I are such God's masterpiece. Yeah, we are God's poema. We are God's masterpiece. Why did God create us in this way? He created us to do good works. That's what he said. So he made uh, you and me in Christ to live a life where we can do good works. And then, what are these good works? You may ask. It is a life that represents God. Living a life that makes God rich and manifest Him. That is, a, that is the good work for you. So, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7, it is mentioned that He saved us to show how abundant God's grace is for generations to come. Despite being completely broken because of the issue in Genesis chapter 3, He recreated us anew in Christ as new creation. For what purpose? To show through His masterpiece, Poema, how abundant God's grace is and what kind of God He is in the midst of the world. Therefore, we are a new creation of Christ to do His good works. We are God's eternal masterpiece to reach to 37 nations, 5,000 ethnicities, and 20,000 universities. Okay. Please bless each other and your neighbors. Let's bless our neighbors. You are God's eternal masterpiece to reach to 37 nations, 5,000 ethnicities, and 20,000 universities. Your business will become God's eternal masterpiece to reach to 37 nations, 5,000 ethnicities, and 20,000 universities. And your occupation or so. <laughs> Our church will be used by God as his eternal masterpiece to reach to 37 nations and save to 37 nations, 5,000 ethnicities and 20,000 universities. Do you believe it? Do you believe that our church will save to 37 nations, 5,000 ethnicities? Yes, yes, yes. 
<laughs> 20,000 investors or so. Yeah, pray the Lord. <laughs> Your answer was faithful. Yeah. Being filled with assurance. <laughs> Amen. Through Christ, we need the eternal peace from God. Agape, true love, accompanied by faith. And the abundant grace from God. We need them before serving. Yeah. May you first overflow with abundant grace, abundant love, and abundant peace. First, receive overflowing abundant peace from God. First, receive overflowing abundant love from God. First, receive overflowing abundant grace from God. It has to overflow. That's when it's abundant. Look at your face. You can tell if peace is overflowing or if anxiety is overflowing. <laughs> look at your wife and your husband. <laughs> look at their, look at his or her face. <laughs> you can tell if you have received a lot of love or if you are uh, desperately, desperately uh, lacking love. <laughs> Those who receive grace are marked. Those who haven't received grace are also marked. Yeah. May you first overflow with peace. With the peace, Eirene, Agape, love, Charis, and Charis, grace, that God gives. Without the abundance, attempting to serve is fertile. People without peace, love, and grace speak complaints and Resentment, grumble. Anxious people will worry you. Receive abundant aid and peace, agape, love, and caress, grace from God first. You can tell by looking at your face whether peace is overflowing or anxiety is overflowing. You can tell by looking at your face whether you have received a lot of love or if you are craving it due to its absence. A person receiving grace is evident A person not receiving grace is also is also clearly noticeable. Noticeable. May you first overflow with the peace, love, and grace that God gives. Without it, what comes out of your mouth, complaints, and resentment, and grumble. And is all judged based on 
your own level. It's a pity. We need to be filled with God's abundant blessings. Therefore, we need to let these overflowing abundant blessings flow into the world. Let's bless each other. You are a, you are a God's channel of true peace. You are a channel of God's peace. Amen. You are a channel of true blessing. You are a channel of God's peace. You are a channel of God's love. You are a channel of God's grace. Amen. Yes, this peace from God through Christ has come to us. And now it is God's will for it to flow into the world through us. You shouldn't be a channel causing conflict in your home. You should be a channel sending forth, forth peace. Also, bless each other. You are a channel of God's love. Is that correct? Is the love flowing right now? Is it overflowing abundantly from me? Bless each other again. You are a channel of God's grace. Flowing abundantly. When you share the grace you receive from someone you met during the week, The listeners also receive grace. Yeah, you can vitalize them <coughs> through overflowing your true love, grace, and peace. Okay, so let's become uh, servant for the sake of the gospel, just like Paul and uh, Tychicus. That is the what. That is the way uh, you live as a Christian in the role of a, a true worker. Uh, it is a life of a lifelong evangelist, just like Paul and Dickus. Please be a good servant like them. In the new year, we have various uh, volunteer tasks. In our church, yeah. consider them, pray about them, and plan how you will serve. Let's focus on prayer this week and set our plans. Okay? Uh, of course. Yeah. You are uh, another country. You are in another country, but you can serve the church, the body of Christ. Yeah. Please uh, seek out, uh, seek for uh, something you can you can serve. Yeah. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for establishing us 
uh, as your eternal masterpiece to save to 37 nations and 5,000 ethnic and 20,000 universities in the new year. Lord, make us joyful servants who please God, just like Paul and Tychicus. Please enable us to fulfill the role of a good uh, servants, workers. Lord, we want to overflow your true love and your grace and your arena into our works, workplace, and our family and our neighbors. Lord, please bless us to do according to the work, according to the Bible, Lord. Especially bless our international members. Lord, help them to follow yours, to serve you with, with great thanksgiving and true peace of faith. In Jesus' name, we bless and pray. Amen. All right.